you read that title right, and I'm going to support it with real evidence instead of a crazy conspiracy theory, too. So, the myth, and I'll admit it's a pretty convincing myth, goes pretty much like this. A company of some sort wants to sell a product. Pirates get a hold of the product and give it away to everyone free, and so the pro company does not make a po profit, and thus it is the pirate's fault. See, the reason this is such a good-sounding myth is because it works in the physical world scenario. If you or a drunken pirate you know were to raid a ship and steal its cargo, the owner company loses a lot of money. This entire argument, however, hinges on the idea that a pirated item is equal to a lost sale regardless of the fact that no product was lost by the company, or rather that a person unwilling to pay $60 for a game who pirates that game would have paid $60 for that game if they could not have pirated it. Even without that horrible lack of logic, they also seem to forget that Dr. Horrible's sing-along blog happened. You know, that historical movie that was released for free on the internet during the writer's strike years ago, the, the one that managed to win an Emmy because it was so popular and good, the one that uh, only much later after releasing went to iTunes and DVD sales, and by 2009 had earned double their original investment of $200,000. It wasn't a fluke either. The Guild is also doing quite well with a free online release. Jonathan Colton got his start for free online. And he's gotten to write music for one of the most wildly successful games in modern history, Portal. A game which also went free for everyone when the company decided they'd profited off of it enough and wanted to advertise for their upcoming sequel, which was also good. Not quite as good as Portal, but sequels hardly ever are as good as the original. Can anyone even name a genuinely good product that people actually liked that has failed to make a profit due to piracy? Even Spore made a profit, and it was the number one most pirated game of 2008. Oh, I know that companies love to spout that they should have earned like 20,000 more dollars or something, and so that meant that they lost $20,000 to piracy. But really, this is all just a big lie. You see, back before the internet was around, if you had an idea, you needed two things. Money, and a way to distribute your product to the masses. Companies have erected themselves on the basic deal that they will fund your project and distribute it for you, but you have to sign over all the rights to your intellectual property to them. Back then, it was quote-unquote a good deal because you probably would not have even been able to try your idea without their help. Now? Now we have YouTube's revenue sharing for videos. Now we have iTunes and the Android Store for songs and games. Now we have Kickstarter for getting funding without throwing away your own rights. Now we do not need companies whose sole purpose is to acquire the rights to as many intellectual properties as possible. And that is why we have a dozen acronyms to fight. It's not because piracy is a problem that needs to be solved. It's been proven that people will pay for a product they like, even if they could get it for free. The reason these companies are claiming that piracy hurts them so much is so that they can try to have an excuse to pass legislation that will allow them to either break the internet or control it. And they don't care which. To them, the only way to keep themselves from going extinct is to hold a monopoly over the internet just like they used to hold over the world before the internet. But we need to get the word out there before it's too late. 
recently, one of my friends actually told me he didn't even want to talk about ACTA because he was so worn out from the SOPA and PIPA issues that he felt powerless and burnt out. And that's what they're aiming for. They're wanting to just throw legislation after legislation down the pipe, one after another, until we get worn out and stop making a fuss and one of them manages to get through. What we need to do is stand up and tell our governing bodies that they will get the boot if they vote for these policies. Every politician who votes yes on any policy that censors the internet, no vote for them. That will scare them into actually doing their freaking job as representing us. If we don't do it, we can kiss our internet goodbye.